Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. Doing something a little different today. 15 games I think every noob should play. Every person who's sort of new to gaming or doesn't have a really good grasp on the history of the industry or just hasn't played a wide variety of games. Now, most people have played gaming of some kind, whether it's Candy Crush on your phone, or maybe you played Pac-Man back in the day. You know, everybody's done a little bit of gaming for the most part, but noobs are people that just, in this case, maybe they haven't played many games, or they just don't know, maybe they wanna play some games, but don't know what to play. Here are 15 titles that would be good for a noob to play to sort of give them a sort of an overall view of what gaming is like a wide variety of genres now i'm not going to be able to touch on every genre here i'm definitely going to miss out on some titles you think should be included so i want, want you to let me know in the comments what games i should have included that would be good for noobs now i didn't pick some obvious choices like pac-man because likely even a noob has played pac-man at some point or miss pac-man because you see that all over the place still to this day but there will be some familiar titles in this list some that are slightly more obscure uh, but in general it's just an overall just a wide variety of games and I picked ones that for the most part are pretty easy to pick up and play or at least become intuitive over time once you've played it for a few minutes so I could I could do a preemptive, uh, I could sort of ramble about the reasoning behind this list all day, but I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, you know, just sort of my reasoning why each game belongs on the list as I go. So these aren't in order of greatness and they're not the 15 greatest games of all time or anything like that. This is just a good assortment of games. I think someone who's not super familiar with gaming should try out. They should try out all of these. All right, first up is Warlords for the Atari 2600. Now, I've talked about this game before. It's an amazing multiplayer game, which is one reason I picked it. Every noob should play, should experience multiplayer gaming because some of the best gaming, some of the most enjoyable gaming is gaming with your friends, a little couch co-op action, and it works perfectly with the Atari 2600 paddle controllers that work so well. This is an excellent port of Atari's own arcade game. And what's so great about Warlords is, is it sort of has that Pong gameplay to it where you're maneuvering a paddle on the screen and like Breakout, you're knocking out blocks, but it's got that multiplayer element and it's so much fun to play with friends. It is great. So this gives the noob sort of some gaming history, sort of the Pong type game, but elevated to the next level, so to speak, with multiplayer gaming and with Breakout style bricks to, to break out. And with some really nice competitive gaming, it's great. Pong, I considered Pong, but I thought most people are familiar with Pong. Even noobs sort of know what Pong is or might have played a clone on their phone or something. But I went with Warlords because it expands the Pong concept and furthers the education of this hypothetical noob. All right, next up was a toughie. I wanted to include, include a maze game. And again, I didn't pick Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man because a lot of noobs have already played those. Dig Dug. Now, Dig Dug is an amazing game. I, cr I picked it because you can create your own pathways, unlike Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man that have predetermined mazes. Great games, by the way, you know, no doubt about that. But Dig Dug, you can create your own pathways. And now Mr. Do, as you, a lot of you guys know, which is similar to Dig Dug, is my favorite game of all time. But I didn't pick that one because I've talked about that game enough. But Dig Dug is absolutely amazing. The Atari 7800 is a great port. You can play the emulated arcade version. Um, it's so much fun to blow up the monsters, the Puka and Figar, to drop rocks on these enemies. And what's a really cool strategy is if there are several enemies coming at you at once, you'll partially blow up a couple of them and then very quickly uh, destroy a third one because they're all coming at you at once and you have to halt a couple in their, you know, in, when they're coming at you because you can't blow up all three that quickly if they're right up on top of you. So you partially blow up a couple of them just to stop them, to stop them in their tracks and then just try to blow up that third one and then blow up the other two very quickly. So it's a fast game. It has elements of a maze shooter. You create your own pathways. Dig Dug is an excellent maze title that every noob should play. Mazes, maze gaming, that's such a crucial part of early video game history. So I just had to include a maze game. Next up, I wanted to include 
a scrolling shooter for sure. And I went with R-Type. Now this is an early side-scrolling shooter, not as early as Scramble or Defender, but it's still one of the earlier side-scrolling shooters. And the Sega Master System port is excellent. Again, you can play an emulated arcade version or whatever. Uh, if I don't know of any noobs that have a Turbo Graphics, but it's, it's awesome on that game, on that system. But anyway, a lot of noobs are gonna be playing emulated games. So however you wanna go with it, but I would recommend R-Type fantastic side-scrolling shooter. Now more elaborate scrolling shooters came later like Einhander and Raiden and Ikaruga. The power-up system is very intuitive and it's ingenious and a lot of shooters use the power-up system from R-Type moving forward and but I wanted to go back a ways to this one because R-Type there are so many scrolling shooters to choose from but R-Type did it early and it's just about perfect the gameplay and it's got a great smooth difficulty progression which is awesome for a noob it is challenging and a noob is definitely gonna gonna you know die in level one uh, quite a few times but stick with it noobs and you'll do well it's a near perfect shooter Next up, I th figured a Mario game had to be somewhere in this list of 15 games. You've got to include a Mario game of some kind. And I thought about going with the original Super Mario Brothers, but again, a lot of noobs have either played Super Mario Brothers or are very familiar with it. You know, you just seen the gameplay or whatever, just randomly. You just come across Super Mario Brothers. It happens in your life, even if you're a noob. So I'm going with Super Mario Brothers 3. It takes what's great about Super Mario Brothers, amps it up with so much more, a sliding attack, a world map screen, mini games, an inventory system, and characters Mario can turn into. Raccoon Mario, Frog Mario, Tanuki Mario, who can fly and turn into a statue. Great stuff. And I play Super Mario Brothers 3 on Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo uh, with enhanced graphics and everything. Love me some Super Mario 3 and I think every noob should play it. And yeah, if, you, if you've never actually played Super Mario Brothers before, if you're that big of a noob, sure, start with it. But you cannot go wrong with Super Mario Brothers 3, in my opinion the greatest game in the series. Now, if you've seen The Wizard, you know what Super Mario Bros. 3 is about. Great game. Next up is a game that a lot of noobs have even played, and that is Tetris. Why am I picking Tetris? Because a lot of noobs have played like more recent versions of Tetris, or maybe they played Tetris you know, worlds or just other kinds of Tetris. I want to go back to the NES Tetris because to this day, this is my favorite version of Tetris. So if you're a noob or just a younger gamer and you don't really have much experience with the NES, somehow, some way, play Tetris on the NES. Play the NES version. It is amazing. For me, just the controls feel perfectly. It's got the perfect difficulty progression. It just feels right. And for whatever reason, I've played Tetris on the Switch. I've played it on the Xbox 360, just different kinds of Tetris. Tetris Plus on the PS1. Played lots of different kinds of Tetris, but I always go back to Tetris for the NES. And the Game Boy version's not a bad pick either. So I deviate a little bit with this list by picking Tetris because most noobs have played it, but I want to recommend the Nintendo version of Tetris for the NES. Now there's a Tengen version as well that supports two player, uh, but I just like the, the Nintendo version of Tetris on the NES. It just feels right to me. It's just, just a perfect game. Great falling block puzzler. Next up is another NES classic. And I wanted a game to, that incorporated climbing. And I thought, well, should I put Donkey Kong on the list? I was like, no, noobs have played Donkey Kong or at least, at least seen it or are very familiar with it. But I wanted a game with a lot of climbing, but not just a climbing game, not something like Crazy Climber or something like that. Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. Now, I've thought about the first Castlevania game, but Castlevania 3 is even better than that amazing game. Um, it's similar to the original Castlevania, unlike Castlevania 2, which added RPG elements and everything, but it has better graphics than Castlevania, the original. Check out the stained glass windows in level one, and you, are, you, you immediately know you are on to something different. Just a gorgeous game with great gameplay. 
Um, there's alternate pathways leading to different endings, which is certainly different than Castlevania. The first Castlevania, if you go back and play it, you'll notice it's a little bit on the simplistic side, which is not a bad. I love simplistic games, but Castlevania 3 does take it up to a higher level. Uh, like I said, there's different endings, and Trevor can transform into three different partner spirits. So yeah, there's other playable characters in this game. So Castlevania 3, my favorite game in the Castlevania series. Noobs, you got to play this game. It is amazing. All right, guys, everyone has played Galaga, right? You still see it in the arcades today. Even a lot of noobs have probably played Galaga or at least seen it or heard of it. Check out Galaga 90. Now, if you don't have a, a noob is not gonna have access to a Turbo Graphics, most likely, but Galaga 90 is an excellent port of Galaga 88, the arcade game, which you can emulate, um, play a number of ways. Galaga 90 is absolutely amazing. Now, considered Space Invaders, but once again, noobs are very familiar with Space Invaders and, and may have played it at some point, or at least just very familiar with it. But Galaga 90 takes this formula and amps it up to 11, even over the original Galaga. There are bosses, unlike the original Galaga. You can move at warp speed. There's more colorful graphics and characters and things. There's in-game music and triple firing. Everybody loves the dual firing of Galaga. Galaga 90 has triple firing or Galaga 88 in the arcades. And it's got a great sense of progression, uh, levels and things. So it takes Galaga and turns it up to 11. Amazing. All noobs, you owe it to yourself to play some Galaga 90 or Galaga 88. Great stuff. Next up is The Legend of Zelda. A Link to the Past. I think every gamer at some point in their life should play a Zelda game, and if you're a noob or a casual gamer and you really don't have experience with Zelda, play A Link to the Past. Because sort of like uh, Galaga 90 or Castlevania 3, it borrows inspiration from the original game in the series, but it cranks it up. I love it. It's a bigger game than the original Legend of Zelda. It has better music and graphics, and it's got the Dark World. Don't know what the dark world is, noob? You're in for a mind blower when you play this game and you reach that point. Unbelievable. Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. There's hacking, there's slashing, there's adventure, there's mystery, and it's great. And if you're not used to, I didn't include, I'll, I'll tell you, spoiler warning, spoiler ahead, I'm not including a pure role-playing game on this list. That can be a little intimidating for noobs, but Zelda, the original Legend of Zelda, and Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo are great intros to the role-playing game genre. This is more of an action RPG than a pure RPG, but I highly recommend it. Great stuff. Now, next on my list, I figure I had to include a fighting game. Fighting games are just such crucial genre to the gaming world. They really uh, made arcades popular again in the 90s. Um, and I chose Street Fighter 2 Turbo because this is my favorite fighting game of all time. It's intuitive, it's fast, it's fun, the characters are awesome. Uh, it's a great port of 1992's Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting in the arcades. You can adjust the speed of the game. It's got terrific controls and graphics. You do have special moves, but they're pretty intuitive uh, to pull off. If you've never, uh, you know, if you're a noob and you haven't really investigated the fighting genre too much and you're like, special moves, what is that? Check out the, read the instructions and learn to do it and it, it will become second nature over time. So I definitely recommend Street Fighter II Turbo. Another one would be Soul Calibur for the Dreamcast. There's a lot of great fighting games, Mortal Kombat, but Street Fighter II Turbo on the Super Nintendo Highly recommended for you noobs. If you're just getting into collecting or whatever, check it out. All right, guys. I also considered for this list Contra or Contra 3 Alien Wars or something like that. I love platform shooters where you're running along, armed to the teeth, and you're blowing up aliens straight up and diagonally and to the side. Great stuff. I picked Gunstar Heroes because it is different, something different. Love me some Sega Genesis. It's like Contra, but with an anime flair and look to it. Just an unbelievable game. Now, everyone should play Contra. Every noob should play Contra. 
but I want to introduce you noobs to Gunstar Heroes because it's much more obscure. Running, jumping, climbing, ducking, and shooting, but you can also slide tackle, do body slams, flying kicks, drop kicks. You can grab and throw enemies. There are huge bosses to battle. Now this is a difficult game. It's more challenging probably than most of the games on this list but you can play with two players. Now, I prefer two-player Gunstar Heroes over two-player Contra because in Contra, the second player always kind of dragged me down a little. A little. Uh, but Gunstar Heroes, I need a little help, and it's great having a second player along. So Gunstar Heroes, noobs, if you've never heard of it, investigate. All right, what do we got next? How about some NBA Jam? Now you can play NBA Jam on a variety of consoles and their sequels like Tournament Edition, but I've brought out my NBA Jam for the Sega CD. Again, you don't have noobs, you're not gonna have a Sega CD, most likely or access to one, but you can play N NBA Jam a variety of formats. I recommend NBA Jam, NBA Jam, Tournament Edition, you know, some of the earlier NBA Jams, just amazing. As you longtime gamers know, NBA Jam popularized arcade style, over the top sports games, it has huge flying dunks, rainbow threes from way behind the line, turbo boosts for fast action. You can hit, if you hit three shots in a row without the other player scoring, you are on fire, which is an amazing sensation. It's got great voice effects, uh, just amazing. Hidden characters, NBA Jam, highly recommended if you've never played it before. A lot of you guys know the first person shooter genre isn't my favorite. Uh, you know, probably not even my top 10 favorite of genres in gaming. But there are some that I've enjoyed over the years, like Dark Forces, like Doom, and like Halo Combat Evolved. The original Halo holds up remarkably well. Yeah, Wolfenstein 3D was first. Yeah, Doom was before Halo, way before Halo. And Doom popularized the first person shooter. But you guys need to play Halo Combat Evolved because it's super intuitive. I call it the first person shooter for non-fans. For, fan, for people that don't even like the genre, you might enjoy Halo anyway. Uh, the controls feel intuitive, it looks fantastic. When I play the game, I feel like a soldier on an alien environment. It is amazing, and I'm actually pretty decent at it. I'm not good at games like Call of Duty, those types of games. But for some reason, I'm pretty decent at Halo. Now my son who has played me in the multiplayer mode would tell you I'm not that good at it, but just playing the story mode, I'm decent. It helps that you know it saves along the way. The weapons are great and they're intuitive and there are plenty of them. It doesn't overdo it where you know you do have to look around a little bit for weapons, but you do have plenty of them. You never feel like this game doesn't give you enough weapons. It's just about perfect in every way. Combat evolved for the Xbox. All right, next up, I knew I wanted a racing game uh, in this list. Now, this was a hard one to pick from because I've, I mean, Mario Kart, wow. But a lot of you noobs have played Mario Kart. Even though, you know, you don't have much experience in gaming, you might have played it uh, just at a friend's house or something. But I picked Burnout 3 Takedown. Um, I haven't played all the Burnout games in the series, but I've spoke to different collectors and I've looked online just at lists and things, and Burnout 3 always shows up at or near the top. Now, you can play this on the PS2 as well, I just happen to have the Xbox version. And wow, this is a great game. I've played several games in the Burnout series later on, and I played the first one, but I've liked Burnout, like a lot of people, my favorite Burnout game, at least of the ones I've played, is Burnout 3. It is amazing, and I wanted to include a racing game that was not just racing, not just driving, not just simulation, because a lot of noobs might not like that, or it might get boring a little bit. I wanted something with combat. The game has an emphasis on slamming into other cars and ramming them off the road. It gives you an extended boost bar for driving faster, longer. It is just a fun, fun, super fun game. There's never been one time when I've booted up Burnout 3 and thought, eh, not feeling it today. Every time, it is awesome. Driving up the wrong side of the road and the game encourages that, it is just amazing. A lot of these games on this list, I consider perfect. I think Warlords is a perfect game. I think Dig Dug is a perfect game, even though I like Mr. Do slightly better. I think Halo Combat Evolved is a perfect game. I think Burnout 3 is pretty much a perfect game. It is just super enjoyable. It's got a great mix of racing and combat. Just amazing. If you've never played any of the Burnout games, and you're just a casual gamer or a noob who doesn't game a whole lot, pick up Burnout 3, unbelievable. All right guys, for my last couple of picks, I got 
Even more modern here. I'm a retro gamer, but I like modern gaming as well. I love it, in fact, uh, depending on the game. And I knew I had to include a couple of more open-ended games, and I'm picking one of the most open-ended games at all for my next pick, Grand Theft Auto V. Now, of the Grand Theft Auto games I've played, like three, like four, and some of the others, I absolutely love Grand Theft Auto V. It is probably my favorite. Um, and again, I have the Xbox 360 version. You can play it on the PS3. When it came time for the next generation of consoles with a PS3 and Xbox 360, I weighed my options. I wasn't an early adopter right away, but I just heard so many things about the 360 that that's what I chose. So from that era of gaming, I go with the 360. Uh, you guys, if you want to play this on the PS3, that's perfectly fine, obviously. Just wanted, I didn't want to appear Xbox heavy in this video because I'm a big PlayStation fan, especially PS1 and PS2. But anyway, you have got to play some Grand Theft Auto V. Now, Grand Theft Auto IV is awesome. It's a great game. But V has brighter graphics. It's not so gray and depressing like IV. And the entire world is open to explore from the beginning. It's got great characters and dialogue. And now, the online uh, with this is what a lot of people will tout is what's great about this game. Personally, for whatever reason, if there's a time thing or whatever the case, I don't do a lot of online gaming. For me, it's the story mode, but whatever you do, Grand Theft Auto V is awesome. You're gonna have an amazing time. Definitely for mature uh, players only or players with lenient parents, one or the other. Next up is another modern title. It is Batman Arkham Asylum. Again, I've got this on the 360, but you obviously can play it on the PS3. Just an unbelievable game. I have the Game of the Year edition that I got for $3 at Half Press Books. One thing I love about modern gaming, you can get some amazing AAA titles a year or two later for pennies on the dollar. It's really an interesting phenomenon of video games. If you think gaming has gotten too expensive, Look at a lot of stuff on the PS2 and PS3, the Xbox 360 and the Xbox. You can find a lot of great stuff for dirt cheap. Uh, Arkham Asylum still looks great. It's an amazing looking game. It doesn't look dated at all. It's still just beautiful. It sounds great. And you do feel like you're Batman. You know, like on Sp if some of you noobs, you might have played Spider-Man on the PS4 because maybe your friend got a PS4 and you're like, wow, it looks like you're Spider-Man, or you, it really feels like you're Spider-Man. The Batman Arkham Asylum, you do feel like you are the Dark Knight detective. Now, oftentimes in this game, when you're gonna face several enemies at once, you're gonna wanna use stealth, and the game will sort of walk you through that. One reason I picked this game for my noob list is because it's pretty intuitive. For a game that's this complex, if you open up the controls and you look at all the buttons, that might be slightly intimidating for a noob, but it's actually pretty pretty intuitive. Even an old guy like me can understand this game and get into it really well and make a lot of progress in it. Just amazing. It it just feels right. You feel like you're Batman as much as any game I've played, as much as some of the Spider-Man games like Spider-Man on the PS4, or even dating back to the original Spider-Man on the PS1. You kind of feel like you're the character. I definitely felt this way on uh, Batman Arkham Asylum. When you go into detective mode and you can sort of study your surrounding areas better and find different items and, and different characters and just different ways uh, to explore uh, what's around you, that is really cool. Now, friends tell me that the next two sequels to, Bar to Batman Arkham Asylum are as good or better. I haven't played those yet. I am pretty far into Arkham Asylum. I've been playing it lately. It is a great game. Now again, thank you guys for watching this. Again, let me know in the comments what game or games I should have included on this list. But don't be too hard on me. Don't be too difficult. Don't be too much of a hater because 15 games in a what is basically a 50 year industry. With this list, I just wanted to have a broad view of the industry and just sort of a wide variety of games and just some things that I think you guys, you noobs will enjoy. And if you're a long time gamer and maybe some of these games have slipped past you, try them out as well. I think you'll enjoy them. All right guys, thank you for watching. This has been a long one. Uh, thanks you guys so much for hanging in there. I really appreciate it. And thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you do that, that is amazing. We will talk to you in another, probably shorter video soon.